Hey, in this video, we are going to talk about the DDP specification. You don't need to know DDP in detail. However, learning what happens behind the scenes might help us to create better meter apps. So let's understand a bit more about DDP. So the DDP specification, it's actually simple. So DDP is a protocol between a client and a server that supports two operations. One is remote procedure calls by the client to the server. And those are our methods. If we go back to our application and we see the contact list, we are calling a method from here. And this is one of the operations that uh, DDP specifies. So the next one, is the client subscribing to a set of documents and the server keeping the client informed about the contents of those documents as they change over time. And this is about publications and subscriptions that we just implemented. So we created a publication called All Contacts and then we created a subscription on the client side. So this is what we are talking about. And DDP messages are JSON objects with some fields specified to be eJSON. So let's understand what eJSON is because it is really powerful. So eJSON is an extension of JSON to support more types. And all eJSON serializations are also valid eJSON. We can just uh, do a quick recap to remember that those are the supported types uh, by JSON. So we can have strings, numbers, objects, arrays, booleans, and no. And with eJSON, we can have uh, all the types that JSON supports and also dates, binary data, special numbers, regular expressions, and user-defined types. So why this is so great and why uh, we have eJSON? So if you remember when you are creating an application and if you are using typically HTTP, you can trafficate JSON between client and server. And that means that you can trafficate data that it can be string, number, objects, array, booleans, or no. And using Meteor and using the DDP protocol, we can have other type of data. And this is really cool because like using dates, you can just send a date using a method and you will receive a date on the server side so you don't have to be uh, transforming this kind of data so this is really cool and also the user defined types are really great and we can use user defined types in our publications methods and mini mongo so we could for example in our digital wallet that it is a project that it is pretty simple for the moment but we're going to evolve this project in other modules so what we could do in other modules would be to create a type uh, called money and we could use this new type to communicate between client and server we could send money from the client side to the server side and this is really cool and we can do that uh, using eJSON and we will see how we can do that in other modules for the moment you can just keep this concept in mind and you're going to use it in the future Okay, let's see a bit more about DTP and let's see in our Meteor DevTools extension because that extension is really cool for us to be able to see what is happening uh, behind the scenes and what's happening with DTP. So I will go to my terminal. Let me see if it's running. It is not. So I will just run our application and I will open it here in my browser. It is starting and then we are going to see how we can establish a DDP connection between client and server and this all happens automatically by Meteor but we can observe this just using the Meteor DevTools extension. So to be able to see those DDP messages I will just open our Meteor DevTools extension and we have this tab uh, that is named DDP. So let's go back to this. So let's have a look at a few messages, the more important ones. So when we open our application, we will be able to see 
that the client sent to the server a connect message. And on this message, it will have the session, the version, that is the protocol version, and a support parameter with uh, an array of strings that are the protocol versions supported by the client. So once you send this message to the server, the server might respond with two options. So it might respond with connected. So we are alpine, it is connected, and it might respond with failed. So the client will try to establish a connection to the server, and those are the messages that they can send between themselves. So we can see that by accessing the Meteor Dev Tools from here, and we can look at this DDP tab, and I will just refresh this page. And we can see that the first message is sent from the client to the server, and it is the connect message. And then we have this answer that is the first one that is connected. So this is our client side sending this message to the server side. So now a connection is established between them. If for some reason we can't connect to the backend, so I will uh, stop our server right now. And let's take a look here. So we cannot see any new messages on this DDP tab. But if we go to the console, we can see that the client keeps trying to connect to the server, but it can't. So we can see this failed message. So let's start it back running Meteor. And let's have a look at other messages that are specified by DDP. So other important message is sub. So the client sends this sub message to the server side when it tries to create a subscription. So it sends an ID, uh, the name of the subscription, and a few parameters that the subscription might require. And also it can send unsub to unsubscribe from any subscription from a publication. So when it sends those messages, the server might respond with ready or no sub. So if it is ready, it will return also an array of strings with the name of the subscriptions. And no sub is for the case that the server could not find the subscription. So let's see that uh, in action. If we clean this and let me with a refresh just to make sure that it is working and it is. So let's go to the meter dev tools tab and I will clean this. Let's read a uh, refresh so we can see the DDP messages. And we can see this one, all contacts initialized. This is the sub message. So we're trying to subscribe to the all contacts subscription. And then we can see this next one. No, this is the connected. Yeah, ready. So the subscription is successfully done. If for some reason, we have a wrong name, like instead of all contacts, we can put just anything wrong here. And then we go back there. We can see right away that we have this no sub message from the server. So it could not find the all contacts wrong because it's a wrong name. All right. So let me fix this and save it. And yeah, now everything looks good. Let's move forward. So those are uh, a few messages and there are others from the server to the client. When we add a new contact, this will be done by the method. So a method will be sent to from the client to the server side. And once this contact is added to MongoDB, the server will notify the client with this added message. And we can see that by testing uh, right here. So I will put my name and my email and just some fake PNG and save it. So we can see that we have this edit message and we can see the collection name, the ID of the record and also the fields. The same happens when we remove the contact. So the removed message, uh, the client will call a mature method. So uh, if we see the code, this method will be called, and then the server will notify the client with the removed message. 
So let's test that. I will just remove this one. Let me just clear the DDP messages and I will remove this last contact. And yeah, we can see that we called the Mitro method using contacts.remove. We can see that we passed the ID of the contact right here. And we can see this removed message that we received back from the server. We also have another one that is changed. And this is when we update some record on MongoDB, but we don't have that implemented yet, but uh, it will behave uh, in the same way. If we edit a record like this, we will send this data from a meter method, and then the server will respond with this changed message with all the parameters that we need. There are other DTP messages, but those are the main ones. And I will leave the link for the specification right here so you can have a look and see all the available messages. Now let's go back to our application because there is one last change that we're going to do before we wrap up this module. So uh, at the moment when we click on remove, we are really removing this contact from the database. But I want to do something different so I can show you a new publication where we are going to filter our contacts. So instead of removing, now I want to create a functionality just to archive our contacts. So we won't uh, remove those contacts from the database, but we will just remove them virtually. So for that, let's go to our code. And I will start from the client side, from the front end. Uh, so I will go to this contact item. And now instead of uh, remove, I will name it archive. And I will also refactor and rename our function to archive contact. Let's do this. And also I will create a new meter method that instead of uh, contacts.remove, it will be contacts.archive. So now let's go to our meter methods. And before that, let's just check if everything looks okay in our app. Uh, let's see if it is running, maybe not. Yeah, it is running. So, okay, we have here uh, the archive label now. And on the code, we are going to open the contacts methods and we are going to create a new method. So let's put here contacts, contacts dot archive. And we will receive the same parameters, just the contact ID. And now instead of removing the contact, we are going to set a new attribute to it. So I will also check if the contact ID is the type of string. And now I will call contacts collection dot update. Then we pass the ID. And we are going to pass a new attribute called archived. So to do that, we are going to set a new attribute like this and archived as true. So let's check if it is correct. So contact collection dot update, we are passing the ID of the contact and we are setting a new field called archived as true. Our meter method name is correct. And let's check here if it is also correct, contacts.archive, contacts.archive. Now let's go to our application and I will open the mini Mongo tab and I am looking for Albert. So it is here and I will archive this contact. So let's see if it is working. Yeah, I clicked on archive, but nothing didn't happen. So let's check uh, again, Albert archived true. So actually it happened. So we changed this contact to be archived, but it is still here on the screen because we are not filtering these contacts. So let's go back now to our application. And first we are going to filter this only in the front end side. So on the contact list, 
So right now we are fetching all the contacts and I want to filter by the contacts that are not archived. So I will put here archived not equals not equals true. All right, let's save this and go back to our page and let's see what happens. Yep, you can see we cannot see Albert anymore, but let's check on Minimongo. So we are here on the contacts and we still can see Albert, right? So we can see that archive is true and it is not on the screen anymore. It's not in our list anymore, but it is loaded in Minimongo. So that's why we have to change our publication. So let's go to the contacts publications and we are going to create a new publication. So we will just copy this and this one will bring all contacts and this new one, I will name it just contacts. And now we are going to filter in the same way that we are doing on the client side, because right here we are filtering the data that is inside Minimongo. And I want to filter the data uh, from the server side as well. So I will put the same filter right there. And let me remove this. Yeah, archived true. Okay, save it. And now instead of subscribing to all contacts, I will subscribe to this new publication named contacts. Let's check if everything is okay. So contacts collection dot find archived not equals to true. I can remove this live carry comment and we are subscribing to this new publication. So let's see what happens now and if we can see any difference on the application. So again, uh, Albert is not here and let's see on Minimongo. So yeah, it's not here as well. So now we are publishing only the data that we need. And this is something that you always have to uh, think about. And we are going to have other modules and more advanced modules uh, for performance and how to make your mature applications faster. But this is something that you have to think about once you start creating your mature applications. So let's do another test now. I will archive Melinda. So click on it. Yeah, you see, it is removed from the list and also removed from Minimongo. So yeah, it is working fine. And we have now two types of publications for contacts.